guys. How are you? Welcome back. Wonder what I'm in? Well, we're going to find out in just a little bit. I'll tell you what this is all about. Okay, now I've got to try and get out of here. Here we go. Oh, that wasn't so bad. Okay. All right. So, where did we last leave off? Do you remember who our, let's see, who did we purchase, what did we purchase from France? Do you remember? Yes, we purchased the Louisiana Territory, which we called the Louisiana Purchase. That's right, we got that from France. So now we have this piece of property, and what are we going to do with it? Well, America brought this, Thomas Jefferson bought this property, but I don't know, he doesn't know anything about it. So if you happen to have a piece of land and you didn't know anything about it, what would you do to find out about it? Exactly. You would go and explore it. Well, that's exactly what Thomas Jefferson did. Now, he couldn't do it himself because he's president and he's got to stay in the capital and take care of the country. So he sent people to go do it. He chose two people to lead an expedition to go research the Louisiana Territory. So what is an expedition? Well, let's find out. An expedition is a long trip to explore an unknown area. Okay, so we know that these people are going to go on a long trip and they're going to go explore an unknown area. Unknown, what does unknown mean? Unknown means they don't know anything about it. Exactly. So they're going to find out what is in this unknown area. So who did Thomas Jefferson choose? Good question. All right. Well, first person he chose was Meriwether Lewis. Yes, I know. That's kind of a silly first name. We've never heard that before. But yes, that was his first name, Meriwether Lewis. The reason he chose Meriwether Lewis is because he was a soldier. He was also an aide for Jefferson. That meant he worked closely with him during his pregnancy, um, uh, presidency. He was also a skilled hunter and an outdoorsman. So that meant he knew how to hunt for food, and he knew how to survive in the outdoors. And he also knew a lot about plants. So that was Meriwether Lewis. The second person he chose to help lead this expedition was William Clark. The reasons he chose William Clark was because he was also a military man. He knew how to draw maps. He had drawn maps before about other areas. And he had led other expeditions. He had led other long trips that were successful. And he knew how to manage supplies. He knew how to make sure that they had the right amount of supplies that they needed to make it through their trip. So they didn't run out of food or run out of um, uh, whatever they needed to get through this expedition. So these are the two men that we have, Meriwether Lewis and William Clark. And this expedition is called the Lewis and Clark Expedition. And that's what we're going to learn about today. We're going to learn a lot about them today. All right. <clears throat> now, they were not the only two people on this expedition. Think, think about this. If you're going into an unknown area, are you only going to send two people there? Mm -mm. You need more than that. These two people were just going to be the leaders of it. So he also sent 40 other men to help with this expedition. Okay. So while they were getting ready for this expedition, um, let's think about this first. Have you ever been hiking or camping? Okay. What were some of the things that you brought or you needed to bring? Okay. Exactly. Exactly. Well, when I go, I would bring my backpack to put a bunch of things in. I would definitely bring my jacket in case it got cool out. I would have my pillow. And I would bring a blanket. And along with that, I would also bring whoops, my hammock that you saw me in. That's what this was, my hammock. So those are some things that I would bring while I was camping. Now, to have all these things, I would have to have a lot of space to put them in. A car to pack my car up or a big bag to put all these things in. This wouldn't all fit in just, you know, one backpack. I'd have to have several bags for all these things. What are some other things we might bring? We might bring a barbecue. 
we might bring a tent, we might bring our electric, our um, electronic device, or a GPS so we know where we're at. We might bring some maps, we'd bring some food. Um, let's see, what are some other things? Um, we might bring some firewood or some charcoal, all kinds of things, a cot, stuff like that that we bring, sleeping bags. Well, guess what? These people, they didn't have any of that stuff. They didn't have sleeping bags. They didn't have tents. They they had bags, but they didn't have backpacks. They didn't have pillows, and they didn't have blankets, and they certainly did not have maps or GPSs to help them know where they're going. In fact, there were no maps there. No maps had even been drawn yet of this area because Americans hadn't been in this area yet. So they were truly going to an unknown area. So they had to go without any of the conveniences that we have now. Okay, sometimes we would bring a stove or a grill. They didn't have any of that stuff to bring with them. How about um, clothes? Let's say sometimes you go on a trip and oh no, you ripped your pants. What can you do? You go to the store and get a new pair of pants. And well, could they go? No, there were no stores there. They remember, again, Americans hadn't been there. There are no cities there. There's no towns there. There's probably no villages there from Americans, so there's no stores. There's no nothing. You, whatever you brought with you, that's all you had. So you had to take very good care of your stuff so that you didn't rip it or not have it anymore. How about this? How about communicating? How do we communicate with people nowadays? Well, right here. We have our phones. I call them all the time. We have our phones. We have our computers. We have emails. We can talk to people right away. We even have a mailman. But guess what? They had no phones back then. They had no computers back then. They didn't even have a mailman in the Louisiana Territory. They did back at their in the United States in the old by the in all the states and all. They had mail mail men there. But remember, nobody was living. No Americans were living in the Louisiana Territory, so there was no reason to have a mailman. So they had no contact with anybody for this entire expedition, which was a long trip. Now, they didn't know how long they were going to be gone. They thought maybe a couple of months they would be gone. It was over two years that they were gone. Two years. Could you imagine not having any contact with your friends or family for two years? Whew, that's a long time. I don't know if I could do it. I don't think I could do it. Mm -mm. I could not. Okay. So, this was not just a one-night or a weekend trip. Mm -mm. This was a long time. And this was going to be a very hard journey. This was going to be tough. It was going to take a lot out of them. Now, Thomas Jefferson had some goals that he wanted to have happen during this trip. One of the goals, oh, sorry, wrong side. One of the goals was to study plants. Okay? They wanted to study the plants that were in this new territory. They wanted to study the animals that were in this new territory. They wanted to learn the geography of the area. They wanted to find out where were the rivers, where were the hills, where were the forests, where were the, um, the mountains at. He wanted them to draw a map as they were exploring, to draw the map. Again, that's why they had William Clark there, because he knew how to draw maps. So that was one of the goals, was to map out the area. And then the final one that they wanted to do was he wanted to befriend the Indians. He wanted to find out the Indians that were in this area. He wanted to find out about their lifestyle. He wanted to find out how they lived. He didn't want to hurt them. He wanted to befriend them and find out how they lived. In fact, it was so important to him to find out how that they lived that he even brought, I'm going to try to show you another picture of this. See, this will work. There we go. See those? He even sent, Thomas Jefferson sent Lewis and Clark with a bunch of coins. They were called Jefferson Peace Medals. And he wanted them to give them to all of the Indians that they met to show that he was, that he meant peace and he didn't mean any harm. That this was his um, representation to 
show them that they could trust him and that he just wanted peace. So that's how important it was for him to befriend the Indians that were there. Now, it takes a lot of preparation to have a trip like this. When we prepare for things, um, we might go shopping and buy food. We pack the car. We decide what our entertainment's going to be and where we're going to sit and what book we're going to read on the way over there. That's maybe how we prepare. But that's not how they had to prepare. Think about this. What if they're walking along? Remember, there's 40 men. And say one of them trips on a rock and falls down and has a huge gash in his leg or breaks his bone. How are they going to take care of him? You have to know how to take care of things. They had to have medical preparation. So they would prepare. They would learn how to take care of people if they were sick or if they were hurt. So that was part of their preparation. Another thing is we, when we want to figure out where we're going to go, well, this is how I do it. I'll turn on my phone. I go to, let's see, where is it? I go to Google Maps. There we go. I punch in an address, and boom. It tells me how to get to where I'm going. Did they have a phone back then? Did they have Google back then? Mm -mm, they didn't. They didn't know where they were going. They didn't know what they were going to see. So they had to learn how to find their way. So to prepare for that, they had to study astronomy. Astronomy is the study of stars. And when you study stars, that helps you find out where you're at and where you're going. They use the stars as a, um, um, as like a map. Okay, a lot of the people, um, a lot of the captains on boats and stuff and sailors, they would use the stars to guide them so that they knew where they were going. This is another thing. They can use the stars and the sun. They could read the stars as a map to find out where they're going or where they're at. So those were some of the preparations that they had to do for this trip. <clears throat> okay. Now, this trip that they went on, here we go. I showed you this map before. I'm going to turn this light off. You can see it's a little better. Okay. No, that's really bad. Let me put the light back on. There we go. Okay. This was the map I showed you um, yesterday. Remember, this side over here is the United States, and this is the Louisiana Purchase. And this line right here was the Mississippi River down to New Orleans. This is what Tom Jefferson bought that doubled the size and gave us that trade. Well, now we're going to look at this line right here, starting in St. Louis. This is the path that Lewis and Clark followed. They went up this way and then down around here all the way to the Pacific Coast. Then they came back up this way. You can see where the arrows are showing and then back down the way they came to St. Louis. They went there, see if that will come in, on May 14th of the year 1804. So this is the path that he took. That was a very long trail. That took over two years to go there and back. But they were the very first Americans to go into the Louisiana Territory all the way up and all the way to the Pacific Coast, all the way to the other side of the, of the country. They were the first Americans to do that. That was pretty amazing. Oh, that was pretty cool. Now, when we go and we find things, something new, and we say, oh, look at that. That is the coolest lizard I've ever seen. Or if you go to the zoo and you take pictures, or if you go to a theme park and you see neat things you want to take pictures of, we just take out our camera, we take pictures, we put it on our blog, we write it on our computer, we put it in our notes, we can send it to everybody, or we can even just write it in a journal. Um, those are all different things that we have. Again, did they have computers? Did they have phones? They did not. They had one thing that they could do. They could take their journal. Where's my journal? There it is. They could take their journal and they could use a pen or pencil and write or draw. That was the only thing that they could do. So that's what they did. That's how they kept their records. That's how they wrote all the information down that they learned. As they're walking through this 
uh, Louisiana territory, they would say, oh, look at that. And they would write down what they saw. They would describe the color and, and the texture and the way it looked and how tall it was and how wide it was. Then if they saw something they wanted a picture of, they would draw a picture. If they saw a flower they'd never seen, they would draw a picture of the flower or an animal that they'd never seen. They would draw a picture of this animal. And these journals are what they brought back with them to show everybody all of the things that they saw in this new place. Instead of taking, like, we would just take a picture and say, hey, look at this really cool animal I saw. They would have to take the time and draw it. So think about this. Say you're walking down or you're just going to a zoo and you see this really, really neat animal that you've never seen before. And you have got to show your parents or your friends or whatever. And you would have to draw a picture of it. And you have to draw it good enough so that when you go back to show it to your friends, they can see what you're looking at. That's what they had to do. They had to draw or write everything. They had no other choice. That was how they took care of everything. And in fact, as they were doing this, they found, as they were going through studying the plants, they found 170, I know it's kind of hard to see that, but that's 178 new kinds of plants in the Louisiana Territory. And then they found a new 122 new animals in the Louisiana Territory that they had never seen before. And they drew pictures and wrote about every single one of them that they saw. <clears throat> While they were going through, they would walk through plains and hills and forests and mountains and rivers, and they found all kinds of things. Now, the, one, the main way that they walked was or went through everything was walking. Once in a while, they get to go on a boat or a canoe, sometimes on a wagon and sometimes by horseback. Depends on what path they were on. But most of their trip was walking. Right now, we get into a car and drive somewhere. Mm -mm. They walked for two years. They walked most of the time in what they did. And when it came time to sleep at night, did they pitch their tent and get their sleeping bag out? Mm -mm. No, they didn't have a tent. They didn't have a sleeping bag. They found a nice place that didn't look too rocky. They laid down, put their head maybe on their bag, and they fell asleep out in the open. They didn't have all those luxury things that we have when we go camping. And remember, they're doing this not knowing where they're at in an unknown area. Who knew what kind of animals were going to come? Or what kind of birds were going to come? Or who knew what was going to happen and what they were going to find? But yet they still did. It was very dangerous. But so, so important that they did that. <clears throat> okay, now, again, we talked earlier about thinking about preparing for going on a trip. And one of the things that we said we prepare for is food. Right? We'd go to the grocery store and we'd go buy a bunch of food. Sometimes we get canned food or deli meat or breads or desserts, things like that for our expedition. Well, if you're going away for two years, do you think you could buy enough food and pack enough food for two years? No way! I don't think the grocery store has enough food for you to even buy for two years, to last two years. You couldn't do it. So they had to find their food on their expedition. So how do you think they found food? Again, did they have stores over there? Nope, but no stores because there were no Americans that lived there, so no stores. So how did they get food? Ah, that's right. They did hunting. They did fishing. Um, they did, let's see, um, and they gathered up different plants. So hunting, fishing, and gathering plants. So what kind of animals do you think that maybe they could have eaten? Yes, they had. there was fish, there was birds, there was buffalo, and they even had bears. And guess what? They even ate squirrels. I know, but they did. They ate squirrels. Now how about the plants? What kind of plants do you think they could have eaten? They had roots and berries and leaves and mushrooms. Now, that's good that you can get all of those things out there in the open because, one, it's free. You don't have to buy them. And, two, if you're hungry, you just go find it. And, three, well, it's healthy food for you. 
it's not chocolate and it's not fattening. It's healthy food for you. But now what are some things that are not so good about that? Well, what if it's a plant that you don't know? Is it poisonous? Is it not? If it's unfamiliar to you, you don't know what it could be, you know, what it can do for you. Well, this is where this wonderful woman named Sacagawea comes in. Halfway through their trip, Lewis and Clark met Sacagawea and her husband, and she was actually pregnant with their baby when they met. And Sacagawea helped Lewis and Clark. She was from the Shoshone tribe, and her name means bird woman. She helped them so much because when they would meet the other Indians, she spoke their language. So she could translate for them so they knew what each other was saying. And when the other Indians saw Sacagawea coming, they weren't afraid of her because they knew her. They knew she was an Indian. And they weren't, they trusted her. So since she was with Lewis and Clark, they trusted Lewis and Clark. So Sacagawea helped them very much on their trip. Another way that she helped them um, was she knew the land. She knew the territory. She knew um, some of the places where they're going so she could help guide them through some places. And she knew which plants were good and which plants were poisonous. She knew what unfamiliar ones were and which ones weren't. So she helped them find the right foods. She helped them survive and map out this new territory. In fact, she was so important to America that we even have a coin. It's a dollar, it's a gold dollar coin. And it has a picture. I'm going to try and show it to you and see if you guys can see it. There she is. See, that's Sacagawea with her baby on the back. They even made a coin. And that's how important Sacagawea was to Lewis and Clark and this expedition. It was very important for them. Okay, so where'd it go? Here it is. <clears throat> All right, so our big idea here is that Lewis and Clark led an expedition to see what was in the Louisiana Territory. And she was aided by Sacagawea and her husband. Now, for your assignment today, I think you're going to like this assignment. I know this lesson went a little bit long today, guys, but there's just so much cool information. Okay, so for your assignment, I want you to pretend that you are Lewis and Clark and you are going on an expedition. And you're going to go in your backyard. And if you don't have a backyard, just go to an area near your home. And I want you to look around. I don't want you, <clears throat> excuse me, to look, I don't want you to look at the buildings or the roads or the cars. I want you to look at nature. I want you to look at the plants. Look at the animals. Look at the bugs. Look at the trees. Look at the flowers. Look at the God's creations that are out there. And I want you to pretend that you are on an expedition and you are seeing these things for the first time. And you have to write in your journal everything that you see and describe all of the things that you see. And I want you to at least have six sentences about all of the different things that you see in your expedition. And then I want you to pick one thing and draw a picture of what you see. It could be a picture of a tree that you saw or a flower or an animal or a bug, but I want you to draw that picture. And then when you're done, you're gonna email your picture and your six sentences to your teacher for a participation grade. All right, so go enjoy your expedition. Make sure you write about it and draw your picture. All right, guys, have a great weekend. I miss you so, so much. And I can't wait to see you. All right, guys? Okay. Bye.